Hello and welcome to DCS World. This is the F5E. This is one of the more high fidelity aircraft. That means all the buttons and everything work in the cockpit, which was developed by Northrop Corporation in the early 1970s. It is a light tactical fighter and an upgraded version based on the previous F5A developments. This is the E-Tiger. The F5's combat role encompasses air superiority, ground support and ground attack. Looking a bit of its history, as a result of the wars in Vietnam and the Middle East, the role of a light tactical fighter was reconsidered. Many engineering solutions used in the F5A and B versions were put together and implemented in a new basic modification aimed at dogfights under visual flight conditions. Up until that time in the 60s post-Korea and the Second World War, all the top brass in the US Air Force and Army thought that interactions in the sky between enemy craft would be beyond visual range and there was a time they thought they wouldn't need even guns or cannons on the planes because planes just wouldn't get that close but that was reconsidered in the 60s and hence the development of this craft. As I say this is a an older generation aircraft it lacks many of the modern features like it has no multifunction displays all the dials are analog it's got a very simple air-to-air radar it has no ground radar virtually all the buttons in the cockpit are clickable switchable movable and i'm going to show you later how we go from a cold start to taking off from a runway using the very first training module provided in dcs the aircraft is equipped with two uhf radios an automatic direction finder radio navigation system and a standard set of navigation lights the cockpit canopy provides a superb in-flight view appropriate for air-to-air -air operations. Cannon armament, the gun armament, is two 20mm M39A3 cannons with, 200 rate, with a rate of 280 rounds per each cannon. The cannons are capable of firing at a rate of 1500 to 1700 rounds per minute and each wing tip incorporates a launcher rail capable of firing the AM9 infrared guided missiles. Five hard points, one centerline pylon and four underwing pylons allow the aircraft to carry different types of air-to-ground weapons, bombs, cluster munitions and rockets. 6,400 pounds, about 3,000 kilograms in total. In addition, illumination ammunition and containers for cargo transportation can be attached. To increase flight duration and range, external fuel tanks can be attached to three hard points, a centerline and two inboard pylons. Maneuverability and speed can be maximised in combat by jettisoning all external stores. It goes without saying, of course, that the plane is a supersonic light fighter. The low cost of operating this plane that made it a popular export aircraft, and though primarily designed for a day air superiority role, is also a capable ground attack platform. And during the Cold War, over 800 were produced through 1972 for US allies. Although at the time the United States Air Force did not have a need for a light fighter, it did procure approximately 1,200 Northrop T-38 Talon trainer aircraft, which was based on the original design. The general characteristics of the plane are it has a maximum speed of Mach 1.63, 1740 kilometers an hour or 1080 miles per hour at 36,000 feet 11,000 meters its maximum cruise speed is Mach 0 0.98 which is 1050 kilometers an hour or 650 miles per hour at 36,000 feet it's got a never exceed speed of 710 kn 820 miles an hour or 1310 kilometers an hour it has a range of 481 miles clean it has a combat radius 20 minute reserve of 120 nautical miles. It has a surface ceiling of 51,800 feet, that's 15,800 meters. It has a rate of climb of 34,500 feet per minute, 175 meters a second. A lift to drag 10 to 1. It needs a takeoff run of 2,000 feet, 610 meters, with two sidewinders at 15,000 pounds. And a takeoff run to 50 feet, 15 meters of 2,900 feet. It needs a landing run of 3,701 feet, that's 1,128 metres without a brake chute, and a landing run from 50 feet, 50 metres of 2,500 feet. It has two 20 millimetre guns, 280 rounds per gun. It has seven total hard points, 
Only pylon stations 3, 4 and 5 are wet plumbed. Two times wing tip AAM launch rails. Four times under wing and one times under fuselage pylon station with a capacity of £7,000. It can carry rockets. It can carry missiles, sidewinders, AIM-9s, AIM-120s AMRAMs. Four Mavericks, air to surface missiles or A8 AFID or A8 Alamo or A8 Archer, which are obviously in the hands of the Russians and the Chinese. It can carry Sergeant Fletcher drop tanks and it can carry two GPU cannon pods. Now I'll hand you over to Crunchy in the cockpit for the training. Anyway, today we will learn the procedures to cold start taxi and takeoff in the F5E. I've got all my keys set up so we can just proceed. Attention if you're a gaming device, yes it is on idle. The ignition system can operate from both an external ground power supply and the onboard battery. Set the battery switch to the bat position. Just focus in a bit here. So that's that done. So you can see the batteries come on there. On the right vertical plan, a 2 3 position marked left generator, left generator and right generator with a reset position needed for connecting generators to the power network manually by the pilot. So we're going to put those on, set the generator buttons, set the generator switches to their upper left gen and right gen positions by using the right mouse. Or, as always, there is the keyboard combo. Set the booster pump switches to the upper left and right settings. Just come out. They are there. So we want the left and the right ones. Now we're going to get on the blower to the ground crew. So that's um, just pan out slightly here. So that's um, F8 for ground crew. F5, ground air supply. F1, connect. Chief, connect ground air supply. Copy. Ground air supply is now connected. So that's connected now. We'll press space to continue on with the tutorial. Now we want some compressed... Uh, sorry, to start up the engine rotor. So, ground crew, F8. F5, F3. Chief, apply ground air supply. So they're going to spin up the engine rotor for Copy. us. Air is now applied. So we can see there that that is up. So we need to go down here, press engine start. Done that. And then we need to set the throttle to idle, which is right, alt, and home. My old and home, which fires that up as you can see. So you can set, watch the dials now. I'll take 35 seconds, and as a result, these things will happen. It is between 49 and 52, which it kind of is. Exhaust cast temperature is fine. No less than 140, which it is. Never should exceed 845C. The nozzle position is 60 to 79% from fully open, which it is. And the fuel consumption flow is around 400 pounds per second. Which is a lot of fuel. And the oil pressure is between 5 and 20 PSI, pounds per square inch. And the utility hydraulic system is between 2800 and 3200 PSI, which it is. And the auxiliary intake doors, we can have a look outside. For the auxiliary intake doors, let's have a look outside. Go down and then you can see some doors are open. Whoop, there you are. Twizzle around the back to see them if you like. There they are. So back inside the cockpit. Resetting the head tracking. Right, so that's that and we can press space. 
so we've got to get on the blower again F8 F5 apply Chief, apply ground air supply we're going to start up the Copy. right engine compressor air is now applied so guess what we have to do next that's right press the right engine start button right shift and home just see through my and we check the dials engine dials logs are intake doors should indicate open shortly there they go check the gauges everything looks good press space to continue get back on the blower ground crew F5 disconnect the air supply Disconnected there now, so we can press space again. On the left console is a radar panel, set it to standby. Yeah. Radar is on standby. There goes the radar display warmed up. And now we need to put it back to off because it gets really hot on the ground because it's got nothing to do. So that's off. The air brakes are controlled by a three position thumb switch. Retracted neutral extended on the right engine throttle. Set the air brake switch to the retracted position by right mouse clicking on the switch or by pressing left control in B. And that. Obviously haven't done that right. Huh. That's better. Got it better now. That's better. Right, um, the onboard computer control damper system provide comfortable flight at all. Uh, your left alt and left control A. And left alt, left control W. I think we've done that. That says flaps full. That seems to be good. Set the trimmer. Ah, oh, yes, this is right control and plus, uh, sorry, right control period and semicolon. So we'll just set the trim now. It's hard to see the trimmer up here. But you can see the needle working there. So we have to have it on six, I think. Yeah. Done that. Whoops there. Check to make sure that the airfield pressure is set correctly on the altimeter. Set zero altitude on the altimeter. Let's make the dial go back to zero. And you can see the actual barometric pressure on the numbers that are tumbling there Oops, there. put it on zero that's done and we have to uncage this and let it drop 
Yeah, it won't be that low. You can see the Q and H by pressing left control B, which we'll just do now. I'm oh, sorry, left alt B. And uh, you can see the Q and H is Uh, 750, 29.53 barometric pressure. So we'll just look at this and see what is the right one. Of course, you got a big clue. There you are, that's done. Set the same value, minus 3 degrees, on the primary artificial horizon. That's done, the pitch trim is done. Uh, now we're ready to get going. We're going to increase the RPM to 85%, using the number pad or number degrees, or like I've got, I've got a throttle set up here. So let's um, do that to 85 he said now the escort vehicle is there ahead of us you can see him I'm going to slow down slightly we're going to press S so we can use the nose wheel steering Need to need a bit more power, I think. Typical RPM value is about 60%. Uh, where is the value for that? I think I'm going to have to break here. There we are, we're at 60 percent ish. No, we're not. We're at 55. That's about 60. Slightly more. Come on. Maybe put on 70 and then drop it down to 60. Yeah? Remember to press S so we can do the nose wheel steering. We're a bit fast. W to break. That's better. I don't want to go any faster than that really. Hope we realise we've still got the canopy up. Slightly more bottle oh he's waiting for me oh looks like there's some more f 53 is there as well go to the break again Right, we're at the runway threshold, so we'll throttle off, brake on, so we've got to receive permission to take the runway apparently, makes sense, there are no aircraft landing, can't see any, there are no aircraft taking off, no, so I think we have to get on the radio here, doesn't tell me to do anything, so F1 to take off. You you may take the runway. Okay, I haven't done anything there, but anyway. So put on the Now 
pressing S to free up the nose wheel steering wheels for the front of the craft. So we're going to go on the centre line. Brake. S. Stay. Brake. I've taken the runway, thank you. What do we do now? Flaps are at full. Shouldn't they be at auto? We've done that. So, we've got the strut on. Uh, set the radar mode switch. To stand by. Roll the course to the course of the nose of the plane. 88, apparently. Come on. This would be a quick way to do it if you can just press that. Some aircraft you can just press the button in and it'll go to your current heading. Anyway, not the way. 50, 52, 60, 70. A nine is it or oh, eighty eight? Eighty eight Come on. There we go, eighty eight is set. Um I need to switch on the anti ice pito right control right shift F done that close the canopy it's still there with left control and C here it comes, it's locked in place. Uh, after uh, the marsh, uh, right, okay, so we've got a. Oh, that's wrong. Shit. Is that it? Right, press the master caution. Get rid of the noise. Increase engine throttle to. Hold the brake and press the throttle up to 95%. This is kind of like a two hand job. Is it 95%? Release the brake, start rolling. Speed of 140. That's it, we're 140. We track the landing gear. Where's G? G. Blue green lights are out. Use the pitch trimmer. Let's have a look outside. Whoa. When the aircraft is fully fueled, the right engine tank contains 580 pounds more fuel than the left one. This causes an imbalance. So we've got to press right control, right shift bracket. Done that. When the field is in the level of 50 pounds, the autobahn switch will set itself automatically to the centre position. Where is it? You took off. Well done. We did it. Going to trim it a bit more. We're in the air. I'd rather it was a bit more stable. Flapsy. 
I'm going to drop the revs. All right, we're on 100% power. Military power there. Let's drop it down to 90. Let's get a decent look at ourselves. Man. Hang on. Got to get this thing so that trying to get a bit of level flight going here. We're 11,000 feet already. Right. Where's my official horizon? Angle of attack is 10. Hmm, why? Right. Anyway, in the air, we're blooming rising again. Right, shall we see what this thing can do? I don't think we need that much power. Let's drop power off a bit, that's fine. Right, let's uh, whoa. give it a turn. Yeah, there's the heavy breathing. So, with this one you have to do the navigation by the old map and radio way. <laughs> so. Nice views. Bit of a lake down there, shall we go and take a closer look? At the lake. And then we can do some more lessons using navigation and dare I say shooting stuff out of the sky but that's for next time thanks for joining me here this is Crunchy signing off for now bye